The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, everybody. My name is Louis Shanafelt. Might be somewhat deceive, uh, deceiving for you on your end because it probably lists someone else as today's presenter, potentially Carlene, Tim, uh, or Jeff. But my name is Louis Shanafelt, and I am the product manager uh, slash evangelist for Equatio. And I'm excited to join you all today. I had, uh, you know, the team of Carlene, Tim, and Jeff reach out to me and ask if I could do this demo today for you all. And it looks like we have a fairly small audience joining us today, which is perfectly fine because I'd be happy to stay as long as I need to and answer any questions you have about Equatio. And I know that this is scheduled for approximately two hours today. Um, I know you all have very, very busy schedules and I wanna thank you for joining me for this demo. Um, but I am happy to tell you that uh, this probably will not take the entire two hours. So um, I would be more than happy to stay on the line should you need, uh, you need my time uh, because that's what it's scheduled for. But we probably will wrap up somewhere around an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And then I can stay on the line as long as you need me to to answer any questions that you have. Uh, also joining me today, but he is muting his microphone, is Jeff Levinson. And the other person that you may be currently in contact with uh, is Tim Jones. So uh, if you have any questions for me specifically today, feel free to put those in the box, in the dialog box through the GoToWebinar uh, dialog box there. And also for your convenience, I decided to put today's presentation slides uh, in the chat box for you. So uh, we're going to go over kind of where you can find those and hopefully it should allow you to force make a copy of today's slide deck. So not sure, you know, what everyone's role is today, but if this is a train the trainer uh, type model, you're welcome to use my slides and obviously just change my picture and the title and hopefully you can deliver this training back on your campus. That being said, uh, you know, my name again is Louis Shanafelt and I work for TextHelp and I am the current product manager for Equatio. So take a look at the slide that's on your screen. You will see a uh, shortened URL there at the very bottom that says text.help front slash Equatio desktop. Um, it is case sensitive as I indicated in the chat box. So please go ahead and take, I'll give you about 30 to 60 seconds, just in case you didn't see my chat message. Some of you might have already been uh, uh, eager there and saw that I had posted something about six minutes ago. And if you have a copy of today's slide deck, just kind of hang tight. We're going to give everybody a chance to grab that URL. And I'll give you just a few more seconds here. Um, you can write that down or jot that down. Um, also, it'll remain in the chat box for the duration of the training. So if I see anyone else kind of pop in here a little bit late, I can always direct them to get the slides through that chat window. With that being said, hopefully that's had uh, been enough time for you. So basically text.help front slash Equatio, capital E, capital I, O on the end, and then desktop. Um, we really actually don't like to call it desktop. We actually call it Equatio for Windows and Equatio for Mac, um, but just kind of an easier way to kind of shorten that URL and not make it so large for folks. So we're just going to call it text.help front slash Equatio desktop. Again, my name is Louis Shanafelt, and I am extremely uh, responsive. If you ever, ever need anything uh, in terms of whether it could be just feedback on how you're using our product or maybe you have feedback for our development team. I'd really like for you to think of me as kind of like uh, your go-to contact to make something happen or to help make something change within the product. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say for example, you're using our product or you're, you're rolling out this product to teachers and teachers come across a standard or a benchmark that requires them to use a specific or a certain formula and for whatever reason, you can't find that formula in prediction. Um, it could be because it's not there. More than likely, it's there. Or it could be something that you're just not sure how to find. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter at capital TH underscore Louie S. Or you could just, you know, kindly email me at the bottom, Louie at texthelp.com. And I would be more than happy to uh, write you back and help you um, as you kind of use our product and discover it. 
Uh, some of you perhaps for the first time, and some of you may be uh, kind of middle of the road users. Maybe you clicked on Equatio, you heard about it over a year ago, but you never really, you know, got that involved with it. Maybe you just want to, uh, you know, an update or a history document, and I can share that with you to say, hey, this is the changes that we've made since the last time you've opened or used the product. So be uh, happy to help you uh, along those lines. So really, really, like I said, excited to be doing this demo for you today. I actually, uh, to give you kind of some feedback about me quickly, uh, I work down in uh, uh, Central Florida and I worked for Orange County Public Schools, which is the eighth largest district in the nation. Uh, I was a classroom teacher for approximately 13 years and then decided to kind of make the leap to the district office and decided to start delivering PD to folks that were going one-to-one, -one, showing them how to use these digital tools. And honestly, the first time I saw really all the text help products, I mean, instantly I was like, wow, these things are are just game-changing products and especially Equatio though. And I was a former math teacher, um, but when I saw Equatio for the first time and actually Jeff a uh, good friend of mine here that's on the call with me. Uh, he introduced me to the former product manager. And when I first saw this, I was like, this is the product, you know, that I've been waiting for. And I hope that you all have a, um, a similar response to it. I think you will. Uh, I know that math has always been challenging in a one-to-one -one learning environment. And our goal at Text Help is to make that easier for you. So, that being said, hopefully you've had a chance to look at those slides. I saw someone else just join the webinar. Uh, for the person that just joined, uh, you if you go to the chat window, you'll see that there is a URL there, text.help front slash Equatio desktop. Um, it'll tell you how to get a copy of today's slide deck. Um, so please go grab that if you just joined us a couple minutes late. All right, let's talk about math just in general. So not really sure what everyone's role is there uh, that's in the webinar, but I'm um, kind of excited to show you kind of what the state of math currently is. And uh, well, let's, let's be honest, it's not really that exciting. And our goal is to try and make math, uh, you know, easier and, and more user friendly for students. And when we look at the nation's report card, for example, we see that fourth graders are currently at 60% below proficiency in math and eighth graders are 67% below proficiency in math. So this is extremely discouraging. I mean, as a former, let me change, I want to get rid of that toolbar button uh, there. So this is very discouraging. I mean, frankly, I'm a parent too, you know, and I have two children of my own, and I want to try and help take away some of those fears um, that they have with math and, and the way that they make math. And, uh, you know, I really, really obviously encourage them to use our product as well at home. And, uh, you know, part of the struggle in math has been that math really was left behind when districts started to go one to one. And some of the things that I noticed as frustrations for me as a digital math teacher was that we didn't have a way to really make math. In fact, I remember specifically my principal telling me when I was in the classroom, you know, hey, uh, all the kids are gonna have laptops this year. We're gonna go through all this professional development. But the bad news is, is that, you know, really, really struggling to find a tool we can use to make math digital. And um, not only did my principal and, and other, uh, you know, leaders and educators recognize that, the former product manager recognized that and decided to write in code and make this tool so we could, you know, make a dent and an impact in the one-to-one -one digital environment. So when we think about math was left behind, one of the conversations I had with my principal was, you know, he came up and said, hey, Louie, it's still okay to use paper and pencil, which takes us right to bullet point two. Um, I didn't really like that. You know, I, I wanted, I was an eager, you know, teacher. I was uh, young and I, and I, and I wanted to, to take math to a digital place. I just didn't have the ability to do that. And I didn't like the idea that students, as soon as they entered math class, were told, all right, guys, go ahead and put away those laptops. Let's get out some paper and pencil. When I knew that that was not the conversation they were having in all their other subject areas. When I think of bullet point three, you know, until now, writing equations and math expressions on a computer and a mobile device has always been slow and very cumbersome. And then we always think of technology as a way to make our lives easier and better. And unfortunately, technology kind of created additional barriers in a math and a STEM classroom. So one of the, one of the uh, challenges I always have to remind myself is 
when we think of Equatio, Equatio is not just a math tool. Um, I often have to remind myself of that just because I lived in the math world for so long as a teacher, but we like to call Equatio a STEM tool, not necessarily a math tool. So it uh, might be something you want to think about, especially if you're a district leader or a person using this, that we want to make sure that science folks are aware of this product as well, uh, depending on your role. So you can show this to chemistry teachers, uh, middle school science teachers. Heck, you can send, you can really share it with anyone. Um, I think Equatio over time has had the rap that it's really only for middle and secondary school. Um, I totally disagree with that. Uh, there's lots and lots of things you can do with Equatio in the primary sector as well. Um, and I think that's one of the advantages of text help bringing me aboard as I used to teach elementary school, in particular fifth grade. Uh, and down in Florida, fifth grade is a high stakes test in terms of science. So I know that our fifth graders could benefit from using this product as well. When we think of current math editors, I'm not sure if you guys have used current math editors that have been in the market for a while, but I'd like you to take a look at the screen here. And when we think of current math editors, we think of math type, which has been around a really long time. And when I see these tabs and all these buttons and all these ways to make math, um, you know, I just don't see this as something that's being very user friendly and very easy for folks to, to use and to do. And when I think of like Google Docs, you know, and I know this is a Microsoft training, but when we think of the Google Docs math editor, it's extremely, extremely limited. It really, you go to insert and you go down to equation and it only displays this very small, uh, really for lack of a better term, kind of a pathetic toolbar that makes making math in Google very, very challenging. And then when we think of Microsoft, Microsoft itself has a math editor. Obviously, many of you probably have used their math editor. I also am not a fan of this math editor. Um, obviously, I'm going to you know, be partial to Equatio and what TextHelp uh, has to offer, but I just know that our math editor has all sorts of different things in it, such as formulas, chemical compounds, and ways we can use prediction and ways for students to make math uh, a whole lot easier, uh, including the teachers. You know, we want the teachers to have an easier time making their math as well. So when I think about our math editors on the market today, you know, I think these are some, some questions that we probably should consider. So sorry, I went through that title screen a little too quick. So questions, questions to consider about your math editor is do students have choice in how they make their digital math? And I think this probably is the most important question. When we think about math in general, we think about student choice, or we should think, you know, are students be being given a choice in how they create their math? And the reason behind that goes right into bullet point two, is our math editor is built and was coded and founded upon UDL principles. So if students are given choice, I know that, for example, my own two children, uh, if they had a choice in how they do their digital assignments, they're much more eager to participate in class. They're much more eager uh, to, to make a project or work with numbers or STEM objects. So can students make math using annotation tools? Does your editor use prediction to help students? Can you make the math editor make chemical compounds easy? Is your math editor platform specific? In other words, can it be used across multiple platforms? And is your math accessible for all learners in your classroom? And that's a big thing, because when TextHelp purchased Equatio from the former product manager, his idea was to make math digital. Uh, TextHelp, of course, being an accessibility company and having Read and Write be its flagship product for so many years, it is founded on those accessibility principles. And our goal was to make math digital and then, of course, make it accessible. And I'll make sure I get into those pieces with you as well. Um, so our product is accessible um, to virtually all learners. Um, I would be cautious and careful to say that is Equatio 100% accessible? The answer behind that is no. And we're not 100%, but accessibility is different for all different types of learners and how we think about visual impairments or students that are blind. So I'd like to obviously introduce you today to Equatio and show you the ways in which our product is better than those other math editors that you may be accustomed to using. So um, a little slow here. Let's see. Let me get out of here. Let's here we go. Let me see if I can put this back in present mode. 
Not sure if I'm having a internet lag or what. Uh, let me get out of present mode. Let me just show it like this because I'm not sure what's going on there. So uh, Equatio is a toolbar. So for you all that, that are participating in today's demo, we're going to go through the Microsoft features. But I still want you to know that even though it's a toolbar, it's accessible in multiple platforms and it allows users to make math in a variety of different ways. So today's goal with you all today is we're going to make math uh, accessible in these platforms, but we're going to go over specifically these input methods with you. So we have an equation editor, a LaTeX editor, a graph editor, and so forth. So I'm going to go over the ways in which students can make math. And that's really the key and the foundation behind Equatio as a whole is we provide different ways for students to do their work. Um, not all students are going to love the equation editor, for example. Not all students are going to probably want to use handwriting recognition. You guys might work with students that really, really struggle to, you know, maybe even hold a pencil or to make math or to align their math. I'm going to show you today how our product can help in those in those aspects in those regards. So, um, let's see if I can get this back in present mode. There we go. Uh, what does Equatio do? So, uh, just added this in for you. There's been further discussion and talk um, that currently, right now, the way we use Equatio in the Microsoft atmosphere, so to speak, is we can only use it in Word. But take a look at the second bullet point here. Uh, we actually have a build where PowerPoint is coming. It's on our radar. We actually, actually, I personally have a build where it actually works in PowerPoint. Um, the only holdup there is we really haven't had a chance to put it through our QA process and have our developers look for those bugs and whatnot. Um, you know, we at Text Help, we don't want to rush anything to the market, and have you guys have a bad user experience. So we just need this to kind of go through its process and make sure that it's clear for release. So hopefully in the near future, you will see PowerPoint integration uh, coming and hopefully you'll receive those updates from either our marketing team or the salesperson uh, that you currently speak to. Uh, obviously, what else does it do? It allows you to type handwrite and dictate any and all math or STEM expressions. We have a huge library of formulas, functions, and chemical compounds from simple to complex. Now, again, I mentioned the platforms. We're going to focus on the one up here in the corner. Um, some of you down the road, you may be interested in our LMS integrations. I know down in Orange County, where I'm from, we adopted Canvas down here in our district, so all students are using Canvas. The local colleges are using Canvas. That may or may not be the case in your county, but your county might be adopting something like Schoology or It's Learning or Brightspace 2DL. Lots of different uh, LMS systems out there. I'm a big believer in these LMSs are continuing to trickle down into uh, district offices and lots of districts are going with the LMS system. And I, as the uh, new product manager, am happy to report that we are currently looking at integrating with virtually all of them um, down the road. So uh, if you're curious about specific LMSs and you wanna shoot me a question real quick, um, either through email or through Twitter or just ask through the chat box, I can kind of tell you the roadmap for that if you're interested down the road in LMS integration. So all those things are real exciting uh, that we have on our roadmap and I'll try and share some other things here with you. Um, I want to kind of get into the demo, but I do want to scroll through these slides to just let you know that I'm providing them to you. So a lot of people would ask me, especially people from our sales team, hey, Louie, what are the teacher advantages to using Equatio? So I've listed all those things in the slide deck for you, so you can take a look at these at your leisure. Uh, I'm not going to really go through these one by one with you and kind of read slides to you. That's not really the purpose of this webinar, but I want you to know that I'm giving you these slides just so you have access. And if you want to show these uh, to other teachers or other administrators, ways in which we can really leverage and use the potential for this product. And then I also have people would say, hey, Louie, thanks for the teacher advantages. And oh, by the way, I love that Text Help gives the free for teacher license but I don't really need the student's license. Well, yeah, you kind of do, because it would seem very odd to me 
that a teacher would be standing up at a smart panel or a board or some sort of screen at the top of their at the top of their classroom and they're making all this digital math and then they say okay guys go ahead and get out your paper and pencil i mean i don't really see the advantages of using equatio from solely the teacher perspective the whole principles behind this and that whole udl approach is allowing students to use those udl principles to create and make the math how they see fit very interesting article came out this past weekend. I read it while I was taking a flight home about how, uh, you know, the, the country uh, talking about math in general and how we, we were really kind of lagging and falling behind here in the United States. And one of the things we can do is allow students that creative process to, to make math and to be able to express themselves how they feel best fits them. Um, so I'm going to go over all those different ways. These are just photos of students like using our product. You know, they're they're engaged. Um, I think it provides, you know, great collaborative opportunities to work on higher order thinking skills. I love the first one, too. Like you're going to be a more active learner versus just kind of sitting in rows and being passive so they can use our product to make math. And uh, I just think that the, the 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 opportunities are endless for students as they look at this product. So uh, I'm going to go into the demo now. I just want you to know that those slides are there if you want to take a look at those on your own time. Um, obviously, this here is a Google slide deck that I originally shared with you. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this. And if you want to kind of play along with me, I'm not sure if you've already got Equatio downloaded on your end. Um, it'd be really great if you could kind of, you know, have this not be a sit and get. But I don't know if you're multitasking there. Uh, you might be doing all sorts of things while trying to juggle this webinar and do other things. Hopefully you got some dedicated time, but I'd really love for you to kind of make math with me today. Um, so you're not just kind of sitting and watching me do it. Um, I'd much rather you kind of participate if you would like. If you don't, that's fine too. But notice how I've went ahead and opened up a Microsoft Word document. And I'm going to go and notice I've pinned down here in my taskbar the Equatio application. So I'm careful to say application because I'm obviously showing you the Windows experience today and not the Chrome extension experience today. So I've pinned Equatio here. If you don't have Equatio and you're wondering, hey, how do I get it? Um, hopefully you have it, but you can always go to the Microsoft Store and search for uh, Equatio here. So you can just go in and search for it. Um, if you are new and you're just signing up for it for the first time, you may not have all those premium features from the get-go. Usually that takes three to six hours on the text help end to kind of authenticate. Um, if you've already downloaded Equatio and you don't have it pinned here, you can obviously go here and notice that it is installed here under the E's. Um, I've seen it to where it'll install down under the T's for text help. So just kind of be uh, cognizant of the fact that you got to kind of know where it's at. Um, go ahead and open Equatio through that Windows app. And however you do it through the taskbar, I do so many of these demos, I just pin it down here at the bottom. Um, all my Windows apps are just kind of pinned down there, the ones I use most frequently. And notice here that I have this Word document and on top of, I like to say it's kind of as a, it lays over that Windows document. So I have this toolbar here. And this toolbar allows me to use this product in its entirety. And it basically embeds the math into this Microsoft Word document. So if you're just getting started with Equatio, and I kind of have no idea kind of where everybody's at, I think it would be best if we all started here for this demo is going into the menu. So if you can, go ahead and if you're able to and have this installed, go ahead and click on the blue uh, uh, menu item. This is basically your Equatio menu. And the menu is not extremely robust, so there's not a whole lot you're going to do here within the menu, but that's okay. There are some settings that I think you'll be interested in. I also would like to tell you that even though I shared my contact information with you on, I think it was slide three, uh, the other way that you can get a hold of me is right here in the product. Um, you can actually tell people, hey, I know the guy that answers this feedback. Um, that person is me. All you have to do is click on send feedback. And if you click on that, it's going to open up a Google form, which you can then fill out and basically say, you know, hi, Louie, you did a demo for me. Um, I would love to see you add this formula into the product. 
This is kind of a place where you're going to go give me suggestions about the product. It's not a place where you're going to go and say, hey, I can't get this to install on this student's computer. Um, if you do that, look at when I click on send feedback, I'm going to drag this over so you can see it. It basically, if you're having technical support, it reminds you that sending feedback to me, the product manager, is not the place you want to go. Um, if you want technical support and you're having trouble with the product, you can reach out directly to your salesperson, but I can almost guarantee they're going to ask you to go ahead and send in a ticket to be created under support at texthelp.com. Um, believe it or not, we're a fairly small company, but our tech support team is outstanding. Um, I've, 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 I've interacted with many, many different ed tech companies and technical support, and sometimes, boy, it is, it is just uh, a really, really difficult to get a hold of someone, but our tech support team is by far uh, one of the best I've ever dealt with. So um, if they didn't get back to you within, within a couple hours, I'd be shocked. Um, and even if it's a small team, they are just fabulous. So please reach out to support at techself.com um, and one of our fabulous people will be in touch with you. If you have a suggestion for the product and you'd like to see the product do something that it currently is not doing, go ahead and click on next. You can fill that out and I will get a ping on my phone and I will gladly write you back and, and basically say, hey, let me share that with the development team or we're working on this. So this is a great way to get in touch with me as well. That being said, I'm gonna go back to my menu. This will basically tell you how to get a hold of our support team again. I'm gonna have you go to options if you can. Go ahead and click on options. Notice here, this will indicate to you what version of the software you're using and how long your license is good for. It also will allow you to do some different things right here. And I think this is gonna be the most impactful menu for you. When I go to math options, I can change my font size. I can change the language. We just added Spanish and French. Um, so that was within the last six months, we've added those two languages. But the really, really important piece here is this. When you install this product for the very first time, typically, those two things are going to be toggled in the off position. You're gonna to wanna to toggle those on. I'm actually gonna to speak to development about making sure that those just get toggled on anytime a new install occurs. I think it would be really, really helpful just to have those defaulted to being turned on. The reason is, is if you don't turn on your formulas, you're gonna start typing in formulas and looking for them and saying, hey, you know, I thought Jeff or I thought you know, Louie during the webinar said we have formulas in this product. Well, you have to toggle them on in order to use them and see them. So the formulas are part of the premium package, which you all probably have, and you need to toggle those to the on position. The other thing here is you can have this turned on or off if you think that students or a student is distracted or doesn't really want to see all these input methods. Look, I know, I know teachers much like you guys. Sometimes teachers, when you introduce a new tool, Sometimes too many buttons on a toolbar is just too overwhelming for someone. Um, maybe you just wanna say, hey, let's start small with Equatio. Let's turn off one or two of these buttons and let's turn those on down the road and let them discover what the rest of these things can do. Um, believe me, I know teachers like that. Uh, some math teachers can be, and I can say this, I'm a former math teacher, some math teachers are like, you know, I'm not ready for digital, you know, but what if we just gave them a couple buttons to try? hey, just go ahead and try this. I think you'll like it or have a student, um, or I'm sorry, have another teacher show them the things they can do. So maybe some of these need to be toggled off in the interim, but that's a place you can do that. The desktop options. This is where the Microsoft download for Equatio is slightly different than it is with Google. This is the one thing you can toggle on here. Now, what does that look like? What this means is, is that when you insert the math after making it within Equatio, it's going to turn into Microsoft Word format. I don't think you're gonna want this, but in some cases you might, just know that it's there. I'll show you the difference uh, as we do this demo today and as we start to make some math, what this button actually looks like and what changing this or toggling this on actually does for users. So I'm gonna leave that in the off position for right now. This will tell you how you're signed in. So it's saying Louis is signed in with his Google credentials. And then finally, you're about. This right here will tell you this is the most recent version for Equatio uh, for Windows. So if you don't have this version installed currently, 
you can go to the Windows Store and update there, or you can always go to the Text Help website and get your update there. This is the most current version. If you're not currently running this version, that's perfectly okay. Um, shouldn't be an issue for you, but just wanted you to know that that is where you locate. Hey, if uh, you know you hear from one of your sales folks that there's a new update for Equatio for Windows, this is where you can verify which version students and teachers are using. Uh, what also is very important about this is a lot of times when you go to install software, and you have to download it and you might need admin rights, this is a place where maybe your admin can deploy the newest version to all the computers in the school. Um, so this would be something your IT and tech support for wherever you're located there uh, would be able to help and assist in getting that uh, version of Equatio pushed out and deployed correctly to students and teachers in your district. All right, now that we've gone through the menu and those options, let's have some fun, hopefully. Let's make some math. Let's look at some chemistry options, science, and all that good stuff. And I'm gonna try and take you through the entire user experience. This right here are all your input methods. These are the things we're going to be going over today. And when I think about what I wanna do first, I personally, um, doesn't have to be everyone's first choice, but I love the equation editor. And here's why I love the equation editor. The equation editor is where students and teachers can use our huge prediction bank. And what do I mean by that? Well, I have access to a Google Sheet that has virtually a thousand different things on it. Uh, that's no exaggeration. We have everything from symbols to formulas to, to compounds to all sorts of things that we have in our product. Really, it's a matter of you knowing, uh, hey, what do I type in here to gain access to those things? So again, if we were to use the Microsoft editor, it's gonna be up here and it's gonna be under equation. And I can go here and use this. It's a picture of what I showed you before, but I have to type every single thing in character by character. And this is why I don't wanna use that product. But what if I wanted to come down here and use the Equatio math editor? What if I'm teaching algebra one, for example, and I go to introduce the quadratic formula? Remember I said formula, and because I have formula, I need to make sure the formulas is toggled on in the menu. So if I wanna type in the quadratic formula, could I type it in character by character? Absolutely. But once students understand that the quadratic formula can be acquired by just typing in QU, actually I can go back a letter if you want. If I type in QUA, look the quadratic formula is right there. So I can come over with my mouse or click on it, or if I type in QUAD and all that I see in my prediction is quadratic formula, I can just tap enter. And look how easy that is to make that math. Could I do that by going to insert, going over to equation and making this? Sure, I can do that, but I have to have a, um, you know, lots of experience in making math and using those other types of editors. Let's go over another formula here with you, and I can go ahead and delete this. So I'm gonna trash, uh, click the trash can to get rid of this. What if I'm teaching something a little more higher level and I need to make something that looks like this, the correlation coefficient of sample? Can you imagine making this using the Microsoft Math Editor? I mean, this right here is a pretty complex formula. Can it be made using the Microsoft Math Editor? Sure, I'm sure it can, but what if my students already know what the formula is? Do I really need them to write it down or to make it individually each time? Probably not. So now that I've made the formula for the students, I can come over here and insert that formula. And when I insert it, it's actually going to appear right here inside the Word document. Now, the great thing about our product is we've just made this math digital. What I haven't shown you is the accessible part. So now that I have Equatio making the math here, I'm gonna show you something here that's also pretty awesome is, when I click on it, it is a picture. Do you see that? And now most of you might think to yourself, well, Louis showing me a picture. And I know that pictures are very difficult to edit. Well, that is not true with Equatio. I can click on the picture, and guess what? Actually, I'll close this to really demo this. I'm gonna click on this picture, and I'm gonna go down here and edit the math. So if I click on edit the math and I open 
it's going to open the math and the picture, if you will, right back here for me. Um, I mean, this is a bad example because this is a formula, right? I probably shouldn't change the formula. But let's say, for example, why uh, uh, subscript one is not the correct formula, for example. What if I wanted to put a Z in here? See how I just edited that? And then I put a Z in here and watch what happens when I now insert this. So when I insert it, notice the picture changed. Now that's pretty great because this right here can be edited even though it's a picture. So let's put this back to the exact formula though. Uh, so put that back to the way it's supposed to be and I'm gonna change that picture one last time. Now, the accessible piece. What did Louis mean by saying that now that we've made the math digital, it's also accessible? Well, right now, this math is actually accessible. How do I know that? Because if I click on the picture, and now I'm going to right-click on the picture, I can go down here to where it says Edit Alt Text. And when I click on Edit Alt Text, look what I have over here. I have the Alt Text, and if I scroll down, I will see right here, okay, all the alt text, which can be read, and I'll minimize this so you can see it. I have downloaded NVDA, which is a screen reading software. It's often used by folks who are blind. Now, if I actually turn this software on, it'll read like every single thing I do with my mouse, which I don't really wanna do because it gets very loud. And, um, but what I, wanna sh what I wanna tell you is, is that if I'm using a product like NVDA, which is a screen reading software, I can come over here and I can have this math read aloud. So this right here is all of a sudden accessible for a student who is blind. So that is really, really fantastic that what we do is, because a lot of folks will write me and say, hey, Louie, I really don't like how you make your math into images. Well, that's because people don't understand. We're an accessibility company, and the, the reason why we make our math into images is because we can put that alt text behind it, and it can help those students who have those uh, specific impairments that need that alt text in order to be successful and be included in math or science class. So this right here is a very invaluable and important piece that we create that alt text. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And the reason why I'm hitting enter here, I can close the alt text here. We can come back to that if you want. Uh, I'm gonna move my cursor. And the reason why I'm moving my cursor is because I wanna make more math. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go ahead and hit delete. And what I'd like to do is I'm gonna show you an example of, let's say, uh, just something simple, uh, similar to like a one-step or a two-step equation. I'm gonna pull up an example here that I have that I used just the other day. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in, in my math editor, let's type in something, uh, well, I'd call this simple. What if we do negative three X, okay, plus, now, one thing I always found as a math teacher is I felt like I was also not only a math teacher. When my kids came in and I was teaching them how to use the computer, I kind of felt like a computer education teacher as well because I was constantly helping my kids with keyboarding skills. Sadly, some of those skills aren't taught anymore. Um, but I used to like to tell my kids that if they're very good typers, you can stay on those home row keys. So if I don't want to teach my kids where the plus sign is or how to make the plus sign, what if I just type in PL? So I can use the prediction to help me make math easy. So if I have negative 3x, PL plus, all I did was hit enter, and I have negative 3x plus 7, and now I need to make the greater than symbol. Again, could I teach my kids, you know, the greater than symbol? Sure. But what if I teach my kids to just type in GR? So now I have greater than, and I have the greater than symbol pops up, and then negative eight. So now I have a, uh, you know, an equality here, and I'm gonna go ahead and make a second line. So if I make a second line, look how easy we make this, just tap the enter key. The enter key will allow me to make more math on line two. So I'm now going to try and continue to solve this. So I'm gonna subtract seven from both sides. And if I do that, I might want to move that negative seven more over to underneath that negative eight. And I'm going to go ahead and look over here and look what happened when I made a second line of math. I now get these additional buttons that pop up. 
So what does that mean? Well, you can currently see here that this is already left aligned. But what if I wanted to center everything? I could click on center and it centers it. If I want to right adjust it, it's going to right adjust it. Not a very good example. Let me put some, let me do this. I'm going to take some space out of here. And now let's watch it. If I left adjust it, it's going to move. If I center it, it's going to center. If I right adjust it, it's going to right adjust it. The last one here can be confusing to users, align by relation. Now, if I was doing something that had an equal sign or a greater than sign on every single line, it'll line up everything by your equal sign. We call that align by the relation. I can also make new columns or I can make new rows if I desire to. I don't in this instance, so I'm actually going to left adjust this back. I'm gonna, I'm, here's what I'm doing. I'm actually using the space bar to move that and put some distance there. I'm gonna put my mouse on this side of the negative seven and tap enter again. I'm now left with negative three X greater than, and I get negative 15. And I need to continue solving this. And what I need to do is I need to divide by negative three on both sides. So I'm always a stickler for like showing all of your work. There are some keyboard shortcuts within Equatio. I'm gonna teach you one of those now. It's actually control, shift, and enter. Control, shift, and enter, and watch what happens. I just duplicated that line. And now you might go, Louis looks like he's running out of room. How's he gonna continue this problem? Well, I'm gonna take those little three dots. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag this up so I can make more math. So I'm now going to come over here. I'm going to put a front slash and I'm going to make a fraction. So I'm going to negative three and, and I can do this a couple different ways, um, but I got negative three and now I have a, let me put a negative here in front of this guy. And now I'm left with, I'm gonna move my cursor here, tap enter, and I get X is greater than, uh, it's gonna be five. I'm sorry, I divided by a negative, and I'm gonna flip that sign then to less than, and I get five. So you might wonder, you know, boy, I have math teachers that are really, really, they wanna show the strike through command. Like, can we somehow take this and can we highlight it and show the actual strike through? Well, we can. Notice this in our palette. We've just made some adjustments to our palette recently where I can go here and I can say, I'm gonna strike through and show that those cancel each other out. So how did I do that? I went to more, I went to the general tab and I used the strike through command. So I can do that if I want. By the way, guys, I can access all sorts of symbols here if I want. I can go here and access layouts if I want. I can come here and access all sorts of formulas if I would like, or I can search here. And then finally, much like you guys might uh, favorite, you know, your favorite banking website and you check your bank account each night or whatever, you can favorite math symbols now within our product. So let's say for example, and I don't know why anyone would want to do this, I'm just giving it as a demo, but let's say I wanna favorite this math sequence. I can click here and I can give this a name and let's just call this a number sequence. So NS and I'm going to add this to favorites. And now I can come over here, go to my favorites and there's my number sequence and it actually favorited the whole thing. So, and I can undo that by just clicking here. So some neat uh, functionality and usability features here. You know, for example, I'll give you a better example. Maybe I'm teaching the quadratic formula for the next three weeks of school. Maybe that's a formula you want your kids to favorite so they can access it quickly. Um, so that's an option. I'm gonna now take this entire bit of work. I'm gonna move this back down and I'm gonna come over here and get my alignment buttons again. And I'm just gonna go ahead and center everything. So that looks really, really nice there. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert this math. So when I insert this, you'll notice that this math has now become one picture. Okay, from an accessibility standpoint, I can right click on that picture. I can edit this alt text and I can come down here and this stuff here, I just want you to know that you're gonna ignore that. It has to be there in order for the alt text to generate. I've already spoken to development. Is there a way we can get rid of that? And I was told the answer is no. 
but students or a teacher or a tutor that is helping um, a blind or low vision student could just know to scroll down and then your alt text will be right here. And it's telling you, hey, for this problem, there are five lines. And on line one, negative three plus and so forth. So you'll see that all the alt text is there for the student who needs that read aloud using that screen reader. So again, we made digital math, we have the accessibility piece over here. Um, so that's really, really fantastic. And what this leads into very nicely is, let's say that Louis now wants to graph that. So I'm, I'm gonna come back to the LaTeX. I'm gonna come over here to my graph editor and I wanna graph this. Now, as a former math teacher, I can tell you, and many of you may or may not be aware, that making coordinate planes in a Google Doc or a Microsoft Doc or really any sort of platform, using a coordinate plane is not something that's easy. In fact, the way people would do it is they'd go out to, let's say their browser, they would search for a plane, they would grab the picture, they'd have to save it to their desktop, they then embed it into Word or, or Google Docs, however they're using the plane. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of work to get a plane in. Well, watch this. What if I use Equatio to graph X is less than five? So I'm gonna come down here to my graph editor, I want you to notice something that's really, really fantastic here. And that is that our graph editor is powered and we have a relationship with Desmos. Uh, many of you may be aware that Desmos is a excellent, excellent, uh, uh, you know, ed tech tool that's been in business for several, several years. And we have a partnership with Desmos that allows us to use their product within Equatio. So what do I do in order to make X is less than five? Well, let's type it in. X is less. So look how Equatio works right here. Look at this. So LE less than, and by the way, there's our chemical compounds. I haven't showed you those yet, but I will. X is less than five. And look, how awesome is that? So this shows the shading, you know, for this particular problem. It's got the broken line. And watch how I can then insert this graph right into my Word document. So how easy is that to get a really nice, beautiful coordinate plane showing the graph, students can solve this and then be able to submit this digitally is just really, really great. So that is kind of our graph editor. I'll show you a couple more examples of that. Um, but I, I thought this problem, doing it through the equation editor and then graphing it to show the answer um, would be pretty good for our demo today. So that being said, I'm gonna come over here and make page two of my Word document. Let's go back to our equation editor. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear everything here. And for those uh, folks that are in this webinar today that would like to see kind of the STEM side of Equatio, what if I want to make, well, we can actually go back to this, but I'm gonna type in AL. So if I type in AL I'm in my brain, I'm thinking, hey, I wonder if there's some aluminum compounds in Equatio. Well, take a look. I can actually drag this up. I can come back to AL and look at all the aluminum compounds that we have available for those teachers that may be working with compounds uh, in chemistry class. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop in here aluminum arsenate. There's the chemical compound for aluminum arsenate. And when I click on it, Look how quick and easy that chemical compound is created using our product. And then I can simply insert that into uh, the Word document. So there is page two. There's the aluminum uh, arsenate compound. Again, this is going to be a picture. You may be wondering, I'm not sure if we have a lot of accessibility people on the line today, but what does this look like in terms of its alt text? So for this, it's actually going to read it as it looks. Um, some folks have asked me in the past, you know, can we get it to identify and say uh, aluminum arsenate? The answer, unfortunately, is we have to pick one way or another. Um, most of our users have been advocates for us keeping it this way. Um, that being said, that is the alt text that goes behind aluminum arsenate. So I can make and access all sorts of chemical compounds here. Let's do a couple more. CH for like chlorine. So if I do CHL, that starts to narrow my search. So if I did uh, uh, chlorine tri uh, trioxide, if I click on that, I get CIO and then subscript three. So I can insert that. Um, I have several chemistry folks on Twitter that said, hey, Louie, what about isotopes? You know, can you use isotopes? 
You can. So I've told them to go ahead and try and type in isotopes kind of as a joke in our prediction. And they go, isotopes, you know, where is it? And this is, I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the demo that I told you we have so many things in our prediction, but some of you might not know what to type in in order to get an isotope. So for this particular user, I'm like, well, isotopes isn't called that in our prediction. What it's actually called is nuclear notation because isotopes are a form of nuclear notation. So that's how we have it uh, in our product. And check this out. This is really, really neat. If you type in NUC for nuclear notation, look how we have the isotopes and the numbers. And here's, here's the critical piece of Equatio. Equatio allows for users to have these gray boxes to type in the numbers and the symbols for the chemical compounds. So some of this is just providing that access. What do I mean by that? Well, we're providing the boxes to make the chemical compounds. So we're making those gray boxes for users. So I can come in here and adjust the chemical compound or the numbers that go with it. So if I click out of here, let's take a look at what the isotope looks like once we insert this math. Oh, that's always something I forget to do. I don't like how I didn't move my cursor. Remember, your math is going to go where you left your cursor. So don't forget to move your cursor as you hit insert math. Uh, double check that the cursor is where you want it to go. Notice how I just clicked on the image, hit delete, and I reinserted it on the line that I wanted it. So that right there is really great. We can do isotopes, nuclear notation. Um, some people have said, you know, what about yield? So if I want to show the yield symbol with heat, so a lot of chemistry folks love that we have this in here. Um, they use this quite frequently as they teach some of those higher level science classes. So we have different symbols, different arrows, uh, different ways in which we can help those math and science teachers. So all really, really good stuff there. That's kind of kind of, well, actually, let's do one more example here. Uh, I like to show this just because it's kind of a way to brag about our product, to be honest with you. Um, when I think about how challenging it can be to make some of these formulas, I love to show this one. Simpson's rule for integration. So Simpson's rule for integration, when I type in S-I-M-P and I click on it, look at the size of this formula. I mean, it is gigantic. I can't imagine being a student or a teacher and being required to do this formula and to use this formula on a daily basis and have to write, even if I hand wrote this, it would take a considerable amount of time, right? So when I look at this and I think, look how easy I can make this. How did I do that again? Let's delete it and type in S-I-M-P and I can arrow down and hit enter and look how quick I can make that Simpsons rule for integration. So lots and lots of different formulas, uh, lots of ways that students can make math. My ability to create and make that formula versus doing it this way, you know, can I make Simpson's rule for integration using all these buttons? Absolutely. Okay. I, I'm not trying to disparage the other math editors out there. I just think it's much easier to use our product. And remember, the goal here is to make math easier and to try and overcome some of those barriers. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and move on from our equation editor. And I'm going to go to LaTeX. By the way, I thought that was pretty neat. I should probably show you this. Let's go back to this uh, equation editor real fast. See how I typed in Simpson's rule for integration? Look how I, when I click over to LaTeX, the Simpson's rule for integration carries right over to it. So I can use this multimodal approach and use like Simpson's rule for integration. And then I can come over here and write some handwriting in if I want. So this isn't going to make much sense, but watch me arrow down here. And what if I wanted to come over here and make some handwriting with math? See how 2x is going to be written 2x? So I can go from equation editor to handwriting. I can pop over here to speech, and I can use speech to make my next line. So I want you to be aware that if students are making math, using equation editor on the first line, they can come over and make math on the second line with the handwriting input tool. Um, just think it's neat to kind of show that we work across all the different input methods. So now let's go back to LaTeX. Let's go back to where I, where I was originally at. So just neat to see that we can work across that 
uh, that multimodal approach where students can make math many different ways. So when I look at LaTeX, some of you may be like, LaTeX, you know, I thought that was called LaTeX, you know. You know, many times I hear that, it's just uh, everyone calls it LaTeX, but it's actually called LaTeX, and this is a math markup language that's been around for several years. In fact, many, many university and higher ed professors uh, use LaTeX, so we have the LaTeX editor into our product. But I don't want you to think that students need to know LaTeX or teachers need to know LaTeX in order for this to be successful. That is not the case at all. In fact, let me show you. When I come over here actually into my prediction box and I type in something like the correlation coefficient of sample, when I click on it, notice how the prediction and equatio is going to work over here. But I will tell you that some professors love to type in the LaTeX. We make the LaTeX for you. Okay, so I don't want you to think that students or teachers need to know this. Uh, many of us, I could probably guess, didn't go to school to learn LaTeX. We don't need to know the LaTeX. We will take care of the LaTeX for you. Um, notice how I can come over here if I wanted to and I type in PL. My prediction is going to work here. And by the way, when I typed in PL, guess what showed over here on the LaTeX? PL. So this is going to update in real time. See that? And I can come over here, and this won't make much sense, but what if I type in the quadratic formula? Watch how when I click here, the quadratic formula LaTeX will appear. So when I do that, look at that, the quadratic formula populates right there in real time. So that's really, really neat that whatever we type in our Equatio prediction box, it'll create the LaTeX for you. I often jokingly tell users, like, if you really want to learn LaTeX, I think that would be great. Um, you'd have to have a really, really boring Friday night to sit and learn LaTeX, though. Um, uh, you have to, lots not going on to sit and learn it. But hey, you know what? The really neat thing is, is it'll update right here in real time, and you could actually teach yourself LaTeX if you so desire. So pretty neat that you can do that. Regardless, I'm going to bail on LaTeX for right now. I don't want you to think that you have to know it. Uh, I am going to demo uh, one other thing in LaTeX, but it's going to come just a little bit later. Um, I want to go back to our graph editor in Desmos real quick. Notice that the, uh, uh, let me make sure my cursor is where I want it. It is. And I'm going to drag this up. I'd say that Desmos graph editor is probably the one you're going to have to drag up the most because you want to see the entire plane. I'm going to come over here and go ahead and get rid of that. Now, a lot of the things within the Desmos graph editor, I'm just sharing this with you so you're aware, a lot of the settings and the features here, these are not Equatio settings and they're not Equatio features, they're Desmos features. So we can't do a lot of the adjusting or fixing of the product within the graph editor because obviously we don't own it. We're using their software What's important to know is we can get our prediction to work as we make our math. What do I mean by that? Well, what if I want to type in just a simple algebraic expression like 3x minus 4 equals 5, okay? And maybe I want to see what that looks like. Well, there's the graph for what that looks like, okay? It's going to cut right through that axis uh, at 3 comma 0. And when I look at this, I'm going to say to myself, you know, you know, and this is going to be really, really picky, but what if I don't want my line to be red? Well, that's a Desmos feature. So you kind of, I mean, I can certainly help you with this because I've learned all these Desmos settings. But one thing you can do is you can turn off the graph. If I click here, notice the graph disappears. If I click on it, it reappears. If I want to change anything about the graph, you're going to click here on the settings gear. And then you're going to come over and you're going to click on the red circle. And now you can change the line to blue. You can change it to green. You can change it to any of these six colors. Uh, what you can't do is write Louie from Text Help and say, hey, can you get, uh, you know, about 10 more colors added to the color palette? Unfortunately, that's a Desmos feature and I wouldn't be able to assist you. But I also can create broken lines or this if I want to. Um, so just know that these are Desmos features and kind of your ability to kind of know where to go to make some of these adjustments is important as you use this graph editor. I can zoom out. So if I want to look at this a little bit uh, from a broader scale, I can zoom out. So I'm more above it. I can zoom in if I want to look at it a little bit closer. Um, I can go to settings here and I can label my axes if I want to. 
Um, I can put this in projector mode and notice how it looks a little bit sharper and crisper there. Again, these are Desmos settings. So I could change the uh, distance and what shows on my Y and X axis. I could add labels here. So let's do this real quick. Watch how I label this the Y axis. So it'll show up right there. Okay, I can call this our X axis and I can go and insert this graph. So let's take a look at what this looks like. We're gonna put this graph right into uh, our Microsoft Word document. So see how easy that is to do. Uh, one other thing that's really, really incredible. I usually don't have time to demo this, but I'd like to show this to you guys if you're interested. Um, lots of teachers use Desmos, right? Uh, you may know people that use Desmos, and I would like to show you something that is, uh, it's pretty mind blowing actually. It's really, really great to see. Uh, I'm gonna actually go into my Desmos account. So I went to desmos.com. If you have math teachers that you work with, I want you to know that you don't have to tell them that Desmos is in Equatio and there's no way to get their Desmos stuff over to, uh, to Equatio because that's just simply not true. So notice how I've logged into my Desmos account and many of your math and STEM teachers might have Desmos accounts. And I wanna show you something that we can do here with Desmos. When I go here, I want you to look here and Louie has some of these things saved, okay? And even though I told you I'm from Central Florida and live over here by Disney, uh, I'm gonna choose this Winnie the Pooh one, okay? And the reason why I'm choosing it is not because of Disney or Orlando, but I'm choosing the Winnie the Pooh one simply because I think it's really cool to be able to show you that this Desmos graph, in order to make this, look how many lines it is. It's almost 130 items on these lines. So look at all these different things that went into creating this specific uh, graph that you see within Desmos. Now, this is the really impressive part. This was already pre-built in Desmos, but watch how I can take this entire Desmos graph and move it into Equatio. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna grab that URL. Watch how easy this is. I'm just gonna take that URL, I'm gonna Control C or just copy that URL. I'm gonna now minimize this. I'm gonna come down here into Microsoft Word and I'm gonna go into my graph editor. I'm gonna get rid of anything that's currently in there. So just click on this X. I'm gonna come over here to line one, and what did I just do? I went into Desmos and I copied a URL. So now I need to paste the URL, and watch what happens when I hit Control V on line one. Check this out. Look at that. We just imported that entire Winnie the Pooh graph with all these different line items in it, all went right into Equatio, and now I can insert this right into Microsoft Word. So look how that, how beautiful that looks, how I can take anything that I already previously have built within uh, Desmos and move those graphs right into Equatio if I want to. Um, so that integration and that um, kind of merging of those two products is really great that we can make that type of connection. So that is kind of our graph editor in a nutshell. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete all these things here. I can go to that settings gear and get rid of all 131 items there to make that graph. I'm now going to come over and demo handwriting for you. So let's, we're gonna keep going with these inputs. We're getting a little bit closer to the end and I'll be happy to answer some questions for you guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure nothing is in my box here. Uh, I'm also gonna move Winnie the Pooh here up a little bit so I can see my cursor blinking. And now we're gonna look at another type of math problem. So I'd like to go ahead and write down, and I have a mouse. Obviously it'd be a lot easier if students have a stylus um, or a touchscreen Chromebook or any type of uh, laptop or a device that allows writing right on the screen or with their finger. So I'm going to write, and to show you how intuitive this kind of is, I'm gonna write a fraction here and see how good our handwriting looks. So I have negative three fourths, x is equal to negative five. And notice how that copied perfectly, and my handwriting is not awful, but it's not great either. 
And in order to continue to keep solving this, I need to, right? I can come over here and I like the idea. I was always one of those kind of picky math teachers that wanted my kids to show their work all the time. Um, so a lot of kids uh, didn't like the fact that I wanted to see everything line by line by line, um, but that's okay. I think they learned well from me. I'm now going to make math right here and I'm gonna flip this around and I'm gonna get four thirds negative. So notice I have here that I'm multiplying by that inverse. I'm gonna come over here to this side and I'm gonna multiply this side by four thirds, okay? And I now have made some more math here. Now these things are gonna go ahead and cancel, right? So how did I do that earlier? I went to more, I went to my general tab and I strike through those items. And what am I left with now? Well, be careful, look where your cursor is. I'm now going to hit enter and I'm gonna get X is equal to and I get 20 over three. And look how easy it was to make that math using handwriting skills. And I can now, and you probably noticed this, even though I didn't touch on it, every time I come over here and click in this equatio box, you probably saw on your end, it does delete your handwriting. So just be, just be cognizant of that fact. I'm gonna come over here now, click in that box, and I'm gonna insert that math. So I'm gonna move this down. Let's take a look, and we now have more math that was made in that Word document. Again, all one picture, all accessible by right-clicking on that image and accessing that alt text. So that is your handwriting, really, really great functionality. I know my seven-year-old, for example, he loves to draw on iPads and uh, loves to use mobile products and whatnot to make uh, you know different things. So. Kids love to be able to annotate and to be able to write with their finger. I think they just kind of need the opportunity. Um, so I would uh, obviously encourage you if you have students that would like to make math digitally, but like to use handwriting, that this is a really, really great feature. Uh, and I'm excited that I was able to have some time here to show that to you. So that being said, I'm going to come uh, down here. Let's get rid of that. And I did. Control Z, let's get rid of that. And I'm gonna hit enter. And I'm now going to go to our next input method, which is speech input. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna be able to record math in this box. And I'm gonna be able to see that math form and populate over here. So one of my slides talked about dictating your math. And this is the prime example. So let's take a, take a look. If I hit the record button, three X squared, minus four y cubed equals eight. And notice that I got three x squared minus four y cubed equals eight. This is a uh, programmed, so to speak, to eliminate ums, errs, hesitations by students as they're dictating their math. It is only listening for math words. I'll give you an example. If I said, uh, Jeff, please go back to your seat in the middle of me recording, it will not record, Jeff, please go back, but it will record two because to your seat, it hears two and it's probably gonna put a two in here. So uh, I'd like to just remind you that it is, it's not a perfect system. It, it is listening for numeric terms and words. So just keep in mind that if it doesn't pick up uh, your users uh, you know, dictating their math accurately, you can always go in here and make your adjustments. For example, let's say that it heard 3x squared minus 4y cubed, but maybe I said 6y cubed. Um, obviously, I didn't, but if I can go and change that before I insert, then that's perfectly fine, and I can watch. I can just insert that right into my Word document, and there it is. So another great way to make math is to be able to speak that math. Um, so really, really great stuff there. Um, that being said, we do have Equatio Mobile, um, a little hang up here. Actually, I uh, recognized this bug a little earlier. There is supposed to be a QR code um, that is currently being fixed by our development team. I assure you, I just got a message actually about this this morning uh, prior to this demo starting with you all today. Um, but students would be able to have the opportunity to scan a QR code or 
they can just go to this website. So really, if we never fix the QR code, they can always just go to this website. Either way will work. Um, so it's not like this product is currently not working. It just means they can't scan the QR, but we can just go here. Uh, for this demo purposes, I think it's gonna be best for us today uh, for us to be able to go into Equatio Mobile and for me to demo this with you, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my browser. And the reason why I'm going to use my browser is they like to tell us really not to turn our cameras on during these webinars um, because cameras and showing video kind of takes up a lot of bandwidth and I don't want to slow down the presentation. So uh, typically, though, I like to demo Equatio Mobile actually using my iPhone um, because students can use their iPhone and go right to this website. As long as they are on an iPhone, they're gonna use their Safari browser. If they're on an Android or an Android tablet, they need to be using the Chrome browser. So the directions are right here. They're gonna to go to this website on their iPhone or on their Android or on their iPad. If they go to this website and they're logged in, which I am, I'm logged into my Texthelp account. Look what we can do. When we go to this website, it's actually telling me, hey, Louis, we see that you have a Word document open. Well, do I? Yeah, it's right here. We've been using it for this entire demo. And it's saying to me that, Louis, whatever you make right now in Equatio Mobile, and by the way, this window right here that I'm moving, this is what's going to appear on your cell phone. So on your cell phone or on your tablet, you're going to have these three Equatio buttons. You're going to be able to use handwriting, okay? Or you're going to be able to use the speech input, which obviously you know that every phone has a microphone. It'd be difficult to talk without it, right? Or we could take a picture with our mobile device. So this is really great, and you can obviously see me there. So I'm going to go ahead and eliminate that and show you that we can take a picture. I can show you how that works. Um, but I can take a picture now uh, with my mobile uh, Equatio product and put this math right into that Word document. So let's try this out. I love showing this because it's such a really, really great feature. When I go to page four of my document, uh, let me grab that website here, which is right here, and watch what I can do. I can come over here with my pen, or my uh, with my pen, it's really your annotation mouse, right? And I can make math right here on this page. So watch this, 3x minus 4 equals 5. And when I do that, I can click on this green check to say I'm done. And it's going to ask me, hey, Louie, would you like to take this handwriting and would you like to convert it into digital math? If the answer is yes, you're going to click on Save as Math. If you have a teacher or a math person that says, oh, no, 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 I'm not real crazy about going digital. I want to see the student's handwriting, which, as you know, we have those folks. Um, that's fine, but I can just click save as image. And if I save it as an image, guess what it's going to save? It's going to save the image, which is the student handwriting. So you have the option. I'm going to show you the save as math. Notice how it converted that right there. And watch when I insert this. Now, imagine this, this window right here. Remember, we're picturing this actually on a mobile phone. So on a mobile phone, I'm going to send this. And where's it going to go? It's going to go right here to this Word document. Watch this. I'm going to click. I'm going to move this out of the way. And look, there it is. How awesome is that? So I'm going to move this back over because this is my mobile device. OK? My mobile device is going to be able to annotate and make math and send it right to my Word document. Let's try another one. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do uh, that same thing again. Three. That is a really ugly three. Let's see. Actually, I wasn't going to save this as math. So we're going to save this as a picture instead and show you what this looks like. So I click here, save as image, and look what I can do. I can send this from my mobile phone or from my tablet. And look, there's the handwritten math. Probably should have moved my cursor, right? That's OK. You get the idea that I can take the digital math or the handwritten math and put it right into my Word document. Let's try another example. So I have, and I told you I'll show you the camera option as well. So let's do the other option, though, the speech. So let's try this. 3x minus 4 equals 5. 
Yeah, I noticed this the other day. This also is a small little bug within Equatio Mobile that our development team has been made aware of. Um, we hope to get that fixed, obviously, real soon for you. But this should re uh, replicate 3x minus 4 equals 5. Um, for whatever reason, it's duplicating my words, but we'll get that fixed uh, here in a future update. Uh, that I can promise you. Um, so let's not even demo that and put that in. But if it did record correctly, it would input 3x minus 4 equals 5. Uh, that being said, let's try the last one here. This is pretty cool, too. I'm going to turn my camera on. And on a post-it note, I recorded some math. So take a look. There is some math. And now picture this math. Picture a student sitting at their dining room table doing a bunch of handwritten math, right? They can actually take a picture of it, of that math, and put it right into the Word document and still submit their work digitally. So I'm going to now take this. I'm going to get rid of some of the extra stuff here. And since I work from home, we certainly don't need to see uh, the pictures on the wall or anything else in this room that I work out of. So there is an image of math and watch. I can, this is pretty cool too. You can take what's handwritten on that sticky note and save it as math and it'll convert it to digital. Or we can just take the image, which if you were screenshotting an entire piece of paper, you would need to use that, and I can insert that. Look at that. So that now goes directly into, oh, you guys couldn't see that. That's my fault. Let's do that again. That's my fault. I think uh, someone just made me aware of that. We're not seeing your post-it note. Got it. Uh, thanks. I, yeah, I was on my second monitor. My fault. Uh, so here, take a look again. I'm going to now screenshot this. Let's delete this, and let's start over. So there it goes. So 3x minus 4 equals 5. So it's going to use that camera there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to take the, uh, the crosshairs there of that math. 3x minus 4 equals 5. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Thanks for letting me know that. That was my fault. And look, that didn't convert very well. Let's try that again. That was not good. So let's try that one more time. So I'm going to convert this, show the camera one more time, and let's delete. Here it goes. 3x minus 4 equals 5. And, you know, from, from a practical standpoint, you might want to just uh, take this, and maybe you want to capture the handwriting on that Post-it note. So if I did that, you would want to what? Save it as an image? So if I save it as an image, it's going to take what was on that Post-it note, and it's going to move it right over to that. There, there's the post-it note there from the previous one. So obviously look at the difference between those two. Like you wanna make sure your, uh, your capture window is very clear and crisp. On the first one, it did perfect. On the second one, a little bit uh, more pixelated. So not real great there. Uh, but nonetheless, so just be careful when you take the picture, you can bring those images right into your digital document and submit those to the teacher. So that's kind of Equatio Mobile. And then finally, one of my absolute favorite parts of Equatio is this screenshot reader. Um, and this is actually really great that I'm coming off of Equatio Mobile because watch what our screenshot reader can do. Let's say that a student would like that math right there read aloud. Remember, this is uh, my scribble with a pen on a post-it note. Can I take this math and have it be read aloud? Well, let's take a listen. I'm going to grab the screenshot reader and I'm going to drag and make this capture window around that math. So remember, this is the really sharp and crystal clear post it note. Let's take a listen. 3x minus 4 equals 5. So that is really, really great. It read that handwriting right off the post it note. Students don't really like to ask, hey, can you read that aloud? Or ask a second or a third time. So I can play it again. Okay, so I have access to that math. It's now accessible. I also, let's see if it can read this blurry post-it note. It's a little bit blurry, obviously, when compared to the one next to it. I can drag that capture window around this. Look at that. So even though, even though that one wasn't as sharp and crisp, it still was able to read that perfectly. 
Um, so that is really, really fantastic that that was able to be read also. I can come over here and see if it can read this. Let's give it a try. I mean, this is uh, even worse handwriting. That three is pretty awful. But let's see if it can read it. Three yeah. minus four equals five. So obviously, as the handwriting got worse, as I continued to capture, it still was able to read that math. Now, that is really, really great. So it can read math that's already on a Google Doc. Um, so that's OK. And the other thing that I think is really impressive to show you all is this. I always, always love and I always have this queued up here for you. Uh, I'm going to, and I know that I'm not on your screen, I'm, I'm going to uh, bring something over for you to take a look at. Uh, here it is. So you might be saying, hey, when's this guy going to show some, some higher level examples? Well, let's take a look at this one. So this here is limits in calculus. And one of my favorite people in the ed tech industry really is Sal Khan. Um, love Sal Khan, love his website. Lots of great um, you know, resources on here for learning. And I used to tell and, and really help my kids go to this website all the time. So Sal Khan is writing some math and he's using that yellow highlighter. We are not sure. Now, remember, I'm out in Chrome now. I'm on the Khan Academy website looking at a calculus problem that he's teaching folks. Now, this right here, I'm going to see if our screenshot reader can read that math aloud. So I'm going to go here. And I'm going to drag a capture window around Sal Khan's yellow highlighter and see if we're successful. So take a listen. F of X equals the fraction with numerator X minus one and denominator X minus one right double arrow F of X equals one comma X not equals one. All right. So to reiterate, what's really, really impressive about this is if I was to take this off, like I was really, really unsure if it was going to pick up Sal Khan's double arrow there. Um, but it actually, if you heard that read aloud back to you through my headset, hopefully you were able to hear that it read it not only perfectly, it put the commas where it's supposed to go. It read this entire problem absolutely perfect. What's even more impressive about this is once I take that screenshot grab, I'm going to do this one more time. I won't play it aloud, though. So let's stop that now. This math that's on this Salcon video currently is what? It's not accessible. How is the screen reader going to read that? It's not able to because it's not accessible math. But watch what we can do with our product. I can not hit the play button because I don't want that read aloud again, but I can come over here. And this is where you can really leverage some of the great things within our product is I can copy this LaTeX. I can get to the math ML, which I don't know if any of you work with students that are completely blind, but math ML is extremely, extremely um, uh, popular in the uh, visually impaired community because math ML can be put through a braille machine and it can help the student read the math character by character. Like this might read too fast for a student, but I can take the math ML and use that so it can be paused and it can be spoken math and read character by character. I can also save the image as a PNG, SVG. I can take this and just go edit it right in Equatio. So I can take Sal's problem, bring it right into Equatio and start making edits, which is awesome. Uh, the other thing that I love to show here though is if I copy the math ML. So I'm gonna now go into my Word document. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna control V. So if I control V, it's gonna think about it here for just a second. Uh, it always does that, my windows crashes. We'll give it a second, it'll probably adjust itself. There it goes. So that right there is, is perfect for people that need the math ML. Not only is this in math ML, I can also go, and I don't really love to demo this, but for users that are math type fans, because math type is not a Textel product, I can go and use the math type add in and I can edit this using math type. So you might go, well, why did Louis show that? Well, what did you guys use to get that math from that Sal Khan video? How did you get it into Word? You're using Equatio. You're using Equatio kind of as that catalyst to bring it from one place to another and you have to use Equatio for that. Then you can go ahead and use whatever math editor you want. 
I like to tell people though, like that right there is the math ML. But what if I go back to the Sal Khan website, I screenshot this one more time. And what if I just edit this right in Equatio? How would I do that? Well, I would go right here, edit in Equatio and look, there's that Sal Khan video problem right there. And I can go and start editing that math right here, right now. So I could change the one to a two. I could change the F of X to something else. Uh, you can edit it however you want and it'll work and be inputted right in using Equatio. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and insert that. And let's go back to Word and let's see where that went. Let's see where it is. There it is right there. Remember, this is the math ML. This is the equatio. So here's the good thing about, here's the difference, I should say. This right here, perfect and wonderful for users of Braille. This right here is an equatio image. If I right click on it, what can I do? I can get to that alt text, which I told you is imperative for screen reading students. So that right there is still accessible math. Um, so that is the math ML. That right there is the equatio image. And you know, one other thing that I forgot to show you is this. I'm gonna go back to the menu. You may remember that I told you that one thing that was really, really unique about the math in Equatio for Word is I can toggle this on and this can become Word font. What does that look like? Well, let me show you. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna pull that math problem, the same thing. So this is pretty neat because I can show this to you in three ways. Look at this math now. Give it one second. See how that right there is in Microsoft Word format? So instead of using the Microsoft editor, I can use that Microsoft math format. So here's the cool thing. This is Math ML. This is Equatio. This is inserting as Word. So you can use any one of those three options if you so desire. I don't particularly like showing the Word, so I'm gonna go back and change that. But I just wanted you to know that that was a possibility. If you don't go back and toggle that back off, it is not going to give you the alt text. And remember, we like to focus on the math is digital, the math is accessible. So when I put it in as a word equation, it's not accessible. There's no alt text behind it. So I'm just showing you the three different options there. So that is really, really great stuff. And then finally, and then we'll take some questions here. I'd like to demo for you one additional thing and that is PDF use. So lots of you know that PDFs are very, very common in public education. They're used all the time by textbook publishers, and I'm going to open a PDF here for you. This right here is a problem that's on limits using the infinity, and I have a couple different options here. I can take my screenshot reader in Microsoft, and I can come and drag a box around the math for a student that needs that read aloud. Two plus the fraction of the numerator 10 and denominator open paren negative nor infinity close bracket squared equals two plus the fraction of the numerator 10 and denominator normal infinity. So that right there was just read perfectly aloud. I can take this, I can bring this into Equatio. I can make, I can get the math ML if I need it for that user that needs this moved into Braille for textbook conversion. Or I love to show this as well. Watch what happens when I open our wonderful text help PDF reader. So what if I open this PDF inside the text help PDF reader? If I open it here, look what I get. I get all the read write tools here at the top. And by the way, I get the equatio tools at the bottom. So this is really, really great. Notice I've already annotated on this document a few different times, so I'm gonna trash that. Um, I can annotate, use the pens, use the highlighters, uh, and, and I can basically use uh, all these functions to annotate right inside of a PDF. Now, when I go to do this, it will probably require you to use uh, the Chrome extension versus the Windows uh, platform but I just wanted you to know that it could be used. So actually, if I go here, and let's say I go and I wanna insert this, it's actually going to point back to my Word document and not the PDF. But I do want you to know that if you wanted some PDF use here, you could actually use the Chrome PDF. I'm gonna close that. 
and watch how when I use the Chrome extension, my Equatio looks a little bit different, but watch now how I can go here and I can type in something simple like the limit uh, just from a time standpoint. I'm just gonna click on that guy right there. A little bit frozen on me. And if I insert this, look at that. That right there is me annotating uh, right there on a PDF. I meant to drag that little uh, uh, compass there. And when I drag that, I can make math on a PDF. What's also impressive here, again, the read write tools are at the top if I wanna use those. And then finally, I can save my annotations on this PDF right to my Google Drive. Okay, so that pretty much concludes uh, the entire demo for Windows for Desktop. Uh, not sure if Jeff is still available and on the line, if there's anything that he wants to add to this. Um, he was the sales gentleman who you might have spoken to or his colleague, Tim, um, in order to kind of lead this training and get this organized for you all today. Uh, again, I really, really, really appreciate your time and joining today. Uh, we're not seeing you. I don't have any other questions. Uh, if you have any, I'll just kind of sit here. Otherwise, um, you're free to chat with me or ask a question. I'll just kind of hang out here if you have something or you want to try something. Thanks, this looks good. Yeah. So uh, great to, great so to we, see that. We, 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 can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Good, so um, uh, I'm not sure if you talked about mass space. Uh, well, it's just this, a smidge. Well, this is Windows, so. Right, so just so everybody knows, what Louis showed you was how we work in a Windows environment. Um, in, the, in addition, and I'll just mention this, we're not gonna necessarily show it to you now, but also access all the tools that Louis showed you, plus some additional tools uh, through an independent uh, window uh, from uh, uh, Word. And that, namely, that is kind of like a website. It's uh, uh, massspace.techstop.com. And let me show it to you up on the screen. And this allows you to, at some sense, use Equatio in two different ways. One is if you had a whiteboard up at the front, you could use Equatio as your digital whiteboard. And so a lot of what Louis showed you, plus more, you could actually demonstrate in front of a class, which is very helpful. In addition, what you can do is you could also create uh, problems assignments etc on this whiteboard and distribute them electronically to students um one other thing i know some of you may use canvas or schoology i know we already mentioned this at the beginning but um uh we integrate fully within those lms's um uh canvas is kind of the the the, the one we've done uh, the most work with to date uh and you can act so that that blue equation symbol appears within Canvas. Um, so I just say that to you. Uh, obviously, if you do a an LMS integration, uh, we have to go district wide. And just a reminder uh, to all of you, uh, the Georgia DOE deal is for every one of your students on an IEP. If you want to extend this to the whole district, which uh, you and I think, and he mentioned UDL, uh, not, not to mention the fact that all these tools really enable students to interact with STEM in a way that's uh, really heretofore unknown in the digital environment. And we think that's really important. But what we're willing to do through the rest of this school year, so the Georgia deal is through the calendar year, 1231. What we, or Text Hub is willing to do for the rest of this school year is we will extend a district-wide pilot to the whole district. Uh, and then in July or August, if you decide to pick up a quatio for the district, um, what we will do is credit you the entire IEP population for the first school year. So if you had a thousand kids on an IEP, we would actually deduct that number for the full year, even though the DOE has only committed through 1231. So I don't mean to confuse things. I just wanted to make that available to everybody. Um, and Louis did a fantastic job. He's available for questions. Uh, we, we tried to get him excited about the product. But this wasn't too bad today, but obviously he loves it, and I do as well. And we think your kids will greatly benefit. So I'll stop there, Louis, uh, uh, see if anybody has any questions, and then uh, you can close it when you're ready.
Yeah, I appreciate that, Jeff. No, that was really clear how you're, you're trying to extend these pilots into these counties. And I know when I looked at the registration, um, a few of you that are joining us today are from, you know, neighboring counties, so to speak. So if you're interested in any of that information, you can reach out to me and I can put you directly in touch with Jeff or Tim, depending on who your contact is. And, uh, you know, how do I access the slides? Oh, I think you I think you were the person that might have come in just behind when I access those. Let me show you where the slide deck is, uh, one second. It is on slide, I think you came in shortly after slide two. It's right there uh, for the person that just asked this. It's gonna be text.help front slash equatio desktop, and that is going to be case sensitive. So for the person that asked that, make sure that you type that in exactly as you see it. If you wanna take a picture of it, uh, whatever's easiest for you. I'm going to stay on the line here until, until I know that everyone's, uh, you know, through asking questions or if you want to see math space in particular, I don't mind staying on and showing that. Um, but uh, a really, really uh, a, a great, great tool. Uh, really, when I saw this, uh, you know, it really was something that changed uh, the math classroom for lots of folks. And we have lots of users down here in Orange County um, that just swear by this product. You know, not everyone is going to jump aboard, you know, full steam ahead when they see something like this. But I think it takes, you know, kind of those eager, those go getters uh, with technology that are not afraid. I uh, hate to preface it by that, but like you can't be afraid. You like you take baby steps at first. But, you know, ultimately, we think this is going to be something that your students are absolutely going to love and provide that that avenue for uh, users to be able to make math and science uh, more engaging, allow them to be creative and be active learners in the classroom. Uh, so as Jeff said, uh, I'm going to kind of stop there and let you guys ask questions. If you don't have any, you're free to go, obviously. You've been free to go the whole time. But I appreciate your attendance today. And uh, like I said, if I can help in any way, just don't hesitate uh, to reach out to me. Again, here's my contact information if you need it. Uh, and my name's Louis Shanafelt. So it's a pleasure having you all here. Uh, I'll kind of hang on the line here and just see if we have any questions. Otherwise, you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks for everything. Have a nice day. Yes, sir. You're welcome, Jeff. Enjoy doing it. I'll uh, save the recording and get it over to you and Tim. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Bye-bye.